58 Hamas members were arrested last night throughout Judea and Samaria in overnight operations by the IDF. Is Gaza actually running out of fuel like the world says they are? We're going to get into that all that along with the United Nations Secretary General almost justifying the attacks by Hamas on October 7th. Stay tuned. I'm Justin, and this is The Israel Guys. Welcome to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred and anti-Israel propaganda, you should have a direct connection to the land and people of Israel. Guys, there is a lot of Jew hatred out there today. A lot of anti-Israel propaganda if, you, uh, if you're keeping up with the news at all. Um, with the war that's going on here, here in Israel, you've probably seen a ton of fake news online. So guys, if you want to find out if you want to keep up with what is actually happening here in Israel, subscribe to our channel here on YouTube or wherever you're watching or listening. You can also join our breaking news Telegram channel. You can click the link in the description below if you want to check us check that out. Also follow us follow us on all of our social media platforms so you can stay up to date with what is actually happening here in Israel. Guys, in some breaking news, there were 58 Hamas members arrested last night in Judea and Samaria. Yes, you heard that right. These were Hamas members arrested in Judea and Samaria. Not Palestinian Authority, uh, not Fatah, not Palestinian Islamic Jihad. These were Hamas members, not in Gaza, but here in Judea and Samaria, who were arrested last night. The IDF uh, was very busy last night. They also did a drone strike on terrorists in Jenin. Um, the IDF said, they said that since the start of the war on October 7th, their troops have overall, they've arrested more than 930 wanted Palestinians in the West Bank, Judea and Samaria, including some 608 affiliated with Hamas. That is crazy. Guys, probably um, mind-blowing for a lot of you that Hamas operates here in Judea and Samaria, not just in the Gaza Strip. Most people think uh, Hamas is only working in Gaza, but they're also quite active inside Israel, in Judea and Samaria, also on the Lebanon-Israel border. And this right here leads me on to my next point, and that is that while the Palestinian Authority and Hamas, they have their differences, they have their political uh, differences and rivalries, they, they can both unite on one thing. And that one thing is their utter, utter hatred for the Jewish people and for Israel. They both have the exact same charter to wipe Israel off the face of the map, to drive Israel into the sea, from the river to the sea. Palestine will be free. Guys, here's a video. I want to play this video. It's from a great NGO here in Judea and Samaria, Regavim. Um, this is a video of Palestinian Authority leaders praising the attack by Hamas on October 7th. يعيش شعبنا الفلسطيني من الأمس حتى هذا اليوم حالة نشوء وحالة فرحة كبيرة أساسية من المقاومة الفلسطينية بأننا قادرون باقون مستمرون نقف مع أخوتنا في غزة لأنه يعني فعلا مفخرة وعزة وكرامة للشعب الفلسطيني وجود الاحتلال عليهم أن يفهم أنه لا أمل لهم لا أمل لهم بأن يعيشوا بأمن وسلام تعتدي ونحن الذين ندافع عن أنفسنا ومن حقنا ندافع عن أنفسنا ومن حق الشعب الفلسطيني أن يمتلك كل أدوات الدفاع عن نفسه تحق مشروع كفلته كل الشرائع الدولية شكرا لعزة الدين القسام الذي استعد هذا الاستعداد وأيضا لسطرية القدس بحيث أنهم حينما بدأوا لأرفوا كيف يكملوا دون 
يعني أن يكون هناك تراجع عن الأهداف التي اليوم فلسطين تقف موحدة أمام هذا العدوان البربري الذي يشنه الاحتلال الإسرائيلي سيعرف جيدا هذا الاحتلال أن الشعب الفلسطيني موجود على أرضه ولا بد أن ينتزع حقه So as you can see in that video, it is not just Hamas um, who support the attack um, on October 7th. Also Palestinian Authority leaders here in Judea and Samaria. Regavim spokesperson Tamar Sikorel uh, commented, quote, the statements in the video by senior Palestinian Authority officials prove what we have long contended. The PA is not different from Hamas in any way. It pursues precisely the same goal of eradicating the Jewish people. The Palestinian Authority and those it represents celebrate the incineration of innocents in their homes, horrific acts of rape, kidnapping and murder, butchering of women and babies, and the destruction of flourishing communities in southern Israel as a dream come true, miraculous victory, and a source of great joy. Absolutely right, and also absolutely disgusting. Also... This right here goes against what Biden and his Joe Biden and his administration have been saying. They keep saying this. Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people. Well, if Hamas does not represent the Palestinian people, then why was Hamas elected by the Palestinians in Gaza? And according to polls, the majority of the population in Gaza supported the Hamas attack on October 7th. There are videos of Gazan civilians. They're cheering the Hamas fighters as they're crossing over the border, as they're going into Israel to commit these horrible acts of murder on the Jewish people. They're cheering on their fighters, and they're, there's also videos of them cheering as um, they're parading Israeli hostages through the streets of Gaza. Right now, the United Nations and the rest of the world, for that matter, the mainstream media, the big news outlets in the world, they're complaining that Gaza is out of fuel and it's contributing to the humanitarian crisis that is happening in Gaza. Um, UNRWA, United Nations Relief and Works Agency, they wrote this on Twitter. They said, quote, warning. If we do not get fuel urgently, we will be forced to halt our operations in the Gaza Strip as of tomorrow night. UN agency says its Gaza operation will end tomorrow if we don't get fuel. Might not be such a bad thing. Also, Al, Al Jazeera said this. They said, Gaza is out of fuel, out of time, under Israel's bombardment. The Guardian said, Gaza hospitals ceasing to function as water and fuel run out. ABC said, Gaza to run out of fuel Wednesday night, according to the UNRWA. France 24 said Israeli airstrikes surge in Gaza as hospitals run out of fuel. CNBC said Gaza fuel running out. So what is going on? Is Gaza running out of fuel? Are the hospitals going to shut down? Well, sorry to burst all of you bubble, burst all of your bubbles, but check out this photo right here. Yeah, that is 500,000 liters of fuel that Hamas has stored in the Gaza Strip. Guys, remember, Hamas is in complete control of the Gaza Strip, meaning there is no way to guarantee that the aid sent into Gaza from Egypt um, falls into the hands of those who need it and not the terrorist. Remember that, and that is very important with the uh, all the... the um, aid that's going into Gaza with the $100 million that the Biden administration is giving to Gaza. Guys, stop blaming Israel for these crises that are happening and start calling out the actions of Hamas, um, the real monsters. They released two hostages yesterday. Hamas released two hostages uh, or the other night. They 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 released them some solely for the fact to make themselves look better. Do not believe Hamas, as the rest of the world will most likely do. The mainstream media, the big news outlets, they, for some reason, love to believe Hamas. Just because they released two hostages, now four overall, 
they're still the exact same disgusting monsters that they were on October 7th. Yes, at a press conference, one of the hostages who was released, she said um, she was treated well in Gaza. But it also just so happens that her husband is at this time still being held by Hamas in Gaza. If she didn't say the right thing, most likely her husband would be killed. So what is she supposed to say? She's not going to call out the actions of Hamas while her husband is being held um, by Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Guys, as most of you probably know already, we are in the midst of an operation, opera, an operation called Operation Itai. We designed this project to serve, equip, and defend the communities of Judea and Samaria, the uh, farms and towns that are left vulnerable while the men are called up to fight in the IDF on the northern and southern borders. Uh, here at Hayavel at Operation Itai, we are airlifting supplies to Israel from all over the world. We need things like protective vests, helmets, night vision, binoculars, flashlights, and so much more. Guys, we're trying to raise $29 million to support, protect, and defend the communities of Judea and Samaria that are left vulnerable right now. There are 500,000 people living here in Judea and Samaria who need to be protected, who need to be defended. Now is the time for people from around the world to rise up with one voice to equip and defend Israel's biblical heartland, ensuring that a situation that happened in Gaza will not be created inside Judea and Samaria. Please join us, guys. If there's ever a time to show your support for the nation of Israel, it is right now. We have airplanes already lined up to transport the needed equipment to Israel from the United States. All we need is your financial support. Guys, you can check out the impact that the work is already having. You can uh, click the link in the description below if you wanna check that out. But we believe that this is one of the best ways to help Israel. Right now, you can go to operationetai.com to check it out. Please, please help us defend the communities of Judea and Samaria. Again, that's operationetai.com or you can click the link in the description below. Just when you thought that the United Nations could not get any worse, we all know the United Nations is, for the most part, quite useless and a lot of times very, very dumb. Just when you thought couldn't get any worse, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, he yesterday, it almost appears that he tried to justify Hamas's attack on October 7th. He said this, he said, and I quote, it is important to also recognize the attacks by Hamas did not happen in a vacuum. The Palestinian people have been subjected, subjected to 56 years of suffocating occupation. They have seen their land steadily devoured by settlements and plagued by violence. Their economy stifled, their people displaced, and their homes demolished. Their hopes for a political solution to their plight have been vanishing. After these statements, he did condemn Hamas, but it did not make up for the original horrible statements that he made almost justifying the attacks from Hamas on October 6th on Israel's population. Israeli ambassador to the United Nations, Gilad Erdan, denounced the Secretary General's speech. He noted in a post on Twitter, he said that Guterres spoke at the same time that Hamas was still bombarding Israel with rockets. He said this, quote, the shocking speech by the UN Secretary General at the Security Council meeting proved conclusively beyond any doubt that the Secretary General is completely disconnected from the reality in our region and that he views the massacre committed by Nazi Hamas terrorist in a distorted and immoral manner. He went on to say his statement that the, quote, the attacks by Hamas did not happen in a vacuum expressed an understanding for terrorism and murder. It's really unfathomable. It's truly sad that the head of an organization that arose after the Holocaust holds such horrible views. And then he called on him to resign immediately. Yad Vashem Chairman Danny Dayan also slammed the Secretary General. He said, 
quote, the slaughter of Jews by Hamas on October 7th was genocidal in its intense and immeasurably brutal in its form. Part of why it differs from the Holocaust is because Jews have today a state and an army. We are not defenseless and at the mercy of others. However, it puts to test the sincerity of world leaders, intellectuals and influencers that come to Yad Vashem and pledge never again. Those who seek to understand Look for a justifying context. Do not categorically condemn the perpetrators and do not call for the unconditional and immediate release of the abducted. They fail the test. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres failed the test. Guys, stand with the people of Israel. Do not fail the test. Israel needs you more than ever. You please join Operation Itai. Christian Zionists airlifting emergency supplies to the local farms and communities here in Judea and Samaria with desperately needed equipment. Israel needs you more than ever. Make sure to go to operationitai.com or click the link in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe. Get the conversation going down below. Voice your support for Israel in the comments below. And as always, Tune out the fake news and tune in what is actually happening here in the land of Israel. We'll be back every Monday through Friday with your direct connection to the land and people of Israel.